Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem, a postmortem of my Blitz game number 498. I had the black pieces my opponent kicked off with uh, e4, and we get an Italian game after the usual moves, knight of 3 knight c6, attacking and defending those center pawns, now bishop c4. You see it's a second choice here after bishop b5 to Rui Lopez, but an interesting way to play in the play that, a way that I often play myself. So bishop c5 and now c3. Um, the other main move here, by the way, is um, b4 going into the Evans Gambit. Very interesting way to play, but c3 is the main move. And after knight f6 attacking this pawn, which has not been defended, that the top choice here is d3, defending the pawn. And that's what you will see um, if you see high-level games. They will almost always play that. Um, at this level, actually, I think d4 is a little more popular at my level. Um, and that's the way I like to play it, too. It, it just leads to an exciting... Uh, game. It's basically a gambit <coughs> and uh, leads to some interesting play. But d3, good solid way to play and uh, you can build up a slow attack on the king side. It's not not a toothless way to play at all. And now I need to play right away. Uh, since I don't see this uh, so often, I right away make a mistake. But I need to play the move uh, h6 here. And h6 has two ideas. I mean a6. I need to play a6. <laughs> A6 has two ideas. One is uh, after B4 kicking the bishop, the bishop can drop back to the A7 square. And the second idea is that when the pawn pushes onto B5, kicking the knight, you can just trade it off. So this knight is stable here and can defend the E pawn. So when I play this H6 move, uh, white can actually just win a pawn right here. And uh, the funny thing is, this is not uh, a huge advantage to... Uh, to uh, white, so apparently black has some compensation here uh, if it's played correctly. Here we can get out of the we're out of the opening book now after b4. So the bishop drops back and then b5, kicking the knight. And you see that uh, even b5 is not the not the top choice. Of the chess engine, the chess engine would leave this here and just castle. <clears throat> anyway, b5 though, winning a pawn, a very natural move. I move my knight out of the way and also attack his bishop. That's part of my compensation for the pawn. Is I'm going to win this bishop and get the bishop pair. Um, and he grabs the pawn. And now the best way to deal with this is probably just to castle or d5 right away. I was also playable. Um, I need to do something about the uh, threat to f7, so I can't just ignore that. I chose to take the bishop. But if I could defend against that threat, uh, for example, castle, and then uh, he could try this uh, these uh, knight takes f7. That's giving up two pieces for a rook, but he has a couple pawns. Leads to about an even game. If he just um, castles, you know, just continues normal development, then I have this interesting move, queen e8, trying to chase his uh, knight away. And he can't defend the knight with a normal uh, pawn push because uh, the bishop would hang. So he's, he's in a bit of a pickle. If he drops the knight back to f3, I can take off the bishop and win a pawn. So uh, this restores material equality, but his remaining pawns are kind of messed up here. And black is actually doing well there. So it's interesting in all these lines, knight g4 and provoking some more exchanges is apparently the best way to play it. Um, so that would be the best way for me to handle this, is not to take the bishop immediately, but castle first and then chase the knight away and take the bishop and try and double his pawns. Um, I took the bishop immediately. He took back. And you see... Um, it's not completely losing. I, I could play d5 here maybe for uh, a little more interesting position. Uh, I just castled. But he still doesn't have like um, a, a full plus, plus one advantage here with the extra pawn. So I have some compensation. I guess I always have this move d5 at reserve. I eventually get around to playing it, although it takes me quite a while. Anyway, he decides to take my bishop off at this point. Maybe not the best choice because that was a pretty good knight there. And this does open up a file for me, but still keeping an edge. White keeps an edge. And now d5 here is, is, uh, looks like a good move. I prepare d5 with the move c6. He castles. Oh, let's, let's back up. There was, there was a thing that I wanted to look at here. Uh, the reason I didn't play d5, oh, he played a4. The reason I didn't play d5 right in this position is I was a little bit worried about this move um, e5, kicking the knight. And if uh, knight goes to g4, he can just play d4. Okay, the, the engine is changing his mind. Yeah, this is this is good for white. 
I mean, I guess I still have some compensation, but my knight feels like it might be getting a bit stranded here. I guess I can continue the attack with queen h4. So with the active play, I guess I can get away with this. But uh, yeah, it didn't seem to me that d4 was, d5 rather, was working in this position. So I delayed, uh, I played, after a4, I played uh, c6. And then uh, when he went bishop b2, now I play d5. Uh, and at this point, cancel that. Oh no, I, I continued to delay, I played rook e8. <laughs> I'm taking my time setting up this move. He castled. And now I play d5 with the idea that if he pushes it forward, I can just take it. So uh, he went f3 here, which is actually an engine choice. But now, because he's let me get in the move, uh, d5 under favorable circumstances, actually I have equalized here. So I have a decent, a decent position. f takes, and now I went uh, knight g4 with some threats here. And... Uh, also, the, the knight has a good square on e5, so it's not going to be stranded on, g, on g4 on g forever, although he could maybe stop it. Hmm. Well, I guess he can't push on with d4 because it leaves the e-pawn hanging, so this looks like a, a, good, a good move with the knight. It's not, it looks a bit loose at first glance, but as long as it has uh, good squares to go to, um, it's okay. So he plays queen, e, queen f3, which stops this forking idea, but this allows knight e5 which I didn't spot right away, but knight e5 already is a good move. It forks the queen in this pawn and just uh, wins Wins some material. It gets me my pawn back so the material is even, and, uh, and then it leaves uh, white with kind of a messed up structure and, and uh, backwards development. So that would be good. Um, I played bishop e6. He kicked my knight, forcing me to play uh, knight to e5, and now uh, you can see it's a good move. He has to move his queen. And now I should just take this pawn. Uh, the problem is I took with the pawn. I took the pawn with the wrong piece. Uh, I recognize this like an instant after I played the move. But uh, queen takes, even though it allows a queen trade, um, it's still a, a good move. Whereas knight takes, you know, just walks into this pen, and now things are actually quite awkward. In fact, the the way out of this uh, situation is actually to sacrifice the queen, according to the engine. The engine wants to play knight takes b2. And just give up the queen, and uh, either rook, I guess, and then I, I guess I have a some. Uh, I have a, a um, let's see if we count the material. Yeah, I have a rook and a knight for his rook and knight, and a rook and a bishop against the queen. And maybe I have something because this is a active piece that can come back to uh, c4 here, and I can try and gobble up some of his loose pawns. There's also bishop c4 and rook to d3 trying to win that pawn immediately, but has knights defending it. Hmm, interesting. So I would not have thought of playing like that, <laughs> even even in a slow game. That's that's a that's a hard decision to make. Um, so I just tried to defend the knight. The problem is this doesn't really work after uh, knight to uh, a3 kicking my bishop. Uh, you know, I just don't have a good move here. The uh, engine is suggesting c takes b5. And uh, a takes b5, rook takes a3. Hmm. Let's try this line. C takes b5. A takes b5. I mean, my my um, my um, bishop is still hanging. Okay, rook takes a3. Just giving up the exchange to get out of these difficulties. And then if he can take back with the rook or the bishop. So yeah, I've had I've had to give up an exchange to kind of uh, consolidate my position, but that was would have been best play. I tried queen e7 attacking his knight, but uh, well, his knight can just take my bishop, and he's just a piece up, and he should go on to win without too much trouble. But instead, he takes the knight. So this is uh, more complicated, unnecessarily complicated, uh, giving up the rook for two pieces. So now I have a rook against a bishop and a knight. And uh, and it's not at all clear. In fact, uh, the engine is starting to prefer uh, black already. I mean, technically, the bishop and knight are stronger than a, a rook. But uh, as the board clears out, rooks become quite strong with all the open lines. And his pieces are just kind of tangled up here on the queen side. They don't really have many good squares to go to at the moment. So uh, it just turns a, uh, a winning game for white into a losing game. So anyway, I activate my pieces. And I think uh, the game is pretty straightforward from here on. I pick up another pawn. It's king h2. And uh, 
rook to d2, getting a rook to the second rank and uh, hitting his bishop, attacks it. And then there's one cute trick here that's coming up in just a minute. We go rook d3, hitting his queen. Queen goes to c7. This is a good move. This is activating. Oh, the engine didn't like that. That was funny. I thought it was a good move, activating it. It likes queen f2, just defending. Now, sometimes, you know, you have to go active because if you just play a passive defense, you're going to lose anyway. Um, but uh, it sets up a little bit of a, a trap here, which I fall into. Uh, rook takes c3 is a mistake. And, of course, it's not so easy to see what the uh, tactic is here. Um, but bishop to d2 is a strong move. It, it gains um, a tempo on the rook, and after I move the rook, then his rook comes over here to e1 and skewers my queen and my rook, and I can't uh, get back to defend it. So, uh, so that would be a, a way for uh, white to turn the tables. But he didn't spot this bishop d2 tactic. He played uh, bishop f4, and I think from here on out I managed to stay in a winning position. Let's see, I went to queen d4, and uh, b takes c6, take with the rook, he goes knight to, knight to b5, and now, yeah, he just abandoned his rook in the corner. This this queen move, queen d4 was setting up this kind of tactic against his rook in the corner. And now when I play rook takes c6, yeah, it's a double attack against his queen and his rook. So I think from here on out, it's pretty much game over. Although the game continues <laughs> because uh, I give back some material there. And uh, in the end, I have to sacrifice the rook for the bishop. But I've... Uh, gained enough pawns here that uh, this end game, I go into this end game with queen against queen, but I have two extra pawns. And the key in this end game is just to make sure that your king is not going to get uh, uh, suffer from perpetual checks. As long as you can avoid the checks, um, then it's fairly easy for a queen to uh, shepherd this passed pawn, and so that's just going to score a touchdown. And you'll see that's what happens in the rest of the game here. Get my queen to this uh, square where it's defended by the knight and chase the other queen away. It's a, a key maneuver in these queen and pawn end games. And the other important point is I always have to defend the this pawn. So king to g8. And I inch forward. Now the queen is defending the uh, f pawn here, the linchpin of my defense around the king. And so I can just uh, march forward. And then he allowed this uh, this check here, which gets the queens off, that makes the win even easier. So after this trade, uh, he resigned. So uh, anyway, pretty interesting game, I thought. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will uh, see you again soon. Bye.